Thank you so much for that. And there, there's a meeting uh, July 11th with the Democratic Party. Uh, if you're interested in it, give us your email and I'll send you that information. But there'll be a meeting of uh, the Democratic Party uh, July 11th. I don't know all the details right now, but uh, if you're interested, just give us your email at the end of the service. We'll email you that information so you can have it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Open your Bibles with me to the book of John chapter 8. John chapter 8 and Galatians chapter 5. I'm going to, about 30 minutes, I'm going to hit it from those two areas. When you get to John chapter 8, just put your hand right there. Turn over to Galatians chapter 5 so I can read that. Again, so happy to see everyone here today. Jasmine, don't leave out of here without me praying for both of y'all. Uh, I got to lay hands on you. I ain't seen you in a while. I just got to lay hands on you. I want to wanna pray for you. I want to pray for you. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. I'm at Galatians 5 and 1. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Stand fast with the liberty. How many know you want to be liberated? Amen. You, you, you need Jesus. Amen. You want to be a real liberated woman? Amen. Get Jesus. Amen. <laughs> We're not speaking on women's liberation and women's rights and gay rights and everybody wants their rights. Amen. But if you want to be liberated today, amen, get Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And let's amen. turn back to John 8 where he began to liberate some people in this uh, por portion of Scripture in John chapter 8, verse 30, uh, 29, verse 29, and, and, and he says something right here that, that, that's my message today on interdependence. He says, he that sent me is with me. In other words, I'm not out here doing this thing all by myself. It's one thing to be sent, but it's another thing to be the one that sent you to be with you. You know, all over the world they have missionaries and they have people who have been sent out and uh, they get out there on the battlefield and they get out there on the mission field and they get out there and they're doing what they've been sent to do. And I know, even when you go to college, sometimes your parents sent you off to college and you get out there on the college and you find out that it ain't what you thought it was. Hmm? You know, when we go, we be ran to go. Hmm? But when you get there, it ain't exactly what you thought it was going to be. And these missionaries, many times, they get homesick. They get, they get, they get to the part where they feel depleted. They, they get on the battlefield and they feel like nobody cares. And they write back to the people that sent them, are y'all still with me? Or, I mean, are we still connected? Is, is anybody praying for me? Come on. i never forget when my oldest daughter went off to college. And, uh, she went over to Howard University, and she got up there with all those rich kids, had rich parents. And uh, we, was, we sent her on the word. She didn't go, she didn't go with a scholarship or grant. All she had was a word from God. And she forgot who she was, and she spent all her money. She called me one day and said, I spent all my money, Dad. That was, that was her sucking you. I said, well, how you. How you get like that? You, you're supposed to get, be getting on the meal program. So her and her mom had worked them out another kind of program, you know, called a co-ed program, independent. <laughs> I can work this thing out for myself. 
I thought she was still on the meal program, so I knew at least she was going to eat. But uh, when she called me up and she told me she didn't have any money and she was hungry, and I sent her $40. $40. I told her about my favorite meal. Still my favorite meal. I lived on it for years. Peanut butter and jelly. Give you some peanut butter, some jelly. Give you some milk. Wash it down. I don't know how much $40 will get you, but <laughs> you make it last till the end of the month. <laughs> and she came to me about after she graduated and told me that was her greatest lesson in economics. Come on now, she hadn't been broke since that day. She hadn't had to call me no more. It was a hard lesson, but it was a good lesson. See, being interdependent means that who sent you is still with you. Now, I wasn't with her like she thought I was going to be with her, but I was still with her. I sent her the $40. You know, like they say, can you send it quick? <laughs> What they call that, uh, Western Union? <laughs> Today? <laughs> right away? <laughs> and I didn't give her the answer probably that she was looking for. But I did come through. Man. And it helped her. Come on now. When she go to the store, she have her phone out like a calculator now. I mean, to this day. She, she don't never overspend again. She never overspent her hand again. She haven't asked me for one penny. I think I gave her about 5000 when she got married, but she haven't asked me for one penny right. <laughs> since then. And what I'm saying to you, if you know that God is with you, oh, come on, somebody. The one that sent you is always with you. Come on now. That's what Jesus said. He that sent me is with me. In other words, y'all looking at me, but listen, I'm not by myself. I'm never alone. He said, he that sent me is with me and has not left me alone, for I do always. Oh, my God. This is the part right here. Those things that please him. I almost changed my message. He said, because I know he with me, and he got my back, I'm going to make sure he stay with me. Oh, come yeah. on, somebody. I'm going to do what please him because he the one that's paying the bill. <laughs> huh? Listen, if you don't want, you want to make anybody mad, you want to impress anybody, you want to impress the one that's with you. See, sometimes we try to impress the wrong people. Hmm? We try to impress people that don't care nothing about us. We try to impress people that don't pay no bills. Huh? We try to impress our friends. And my friends. I remember my mama told me, oh man, I remember I had my car and I was burning rubber and had a house right around the corner from my mom and them. And I mean, I come home from work, I couldn't even get in my own driveway. My friends would already be at my house. <laughs> I mean, they was, they was there partying when I got there, waiting on me to get your cash a check. So I told my mom that that was my friend. My mama told me something that was very profound. She said, son, you ain't got no friends. Broke my heart. Me and your daddy, we your friends. Well, about two weeks later, the transmission went out of my car. Nobody came to visit me. I couldn't even get a ride to work. Come on now. I think one of my friends, the one that messed up my car where the transmission went out. So I had to go to my mom and ask her, borrow her car, ask her to stand on the loan with me to get my transmission fixed. And see, she knew I was mad about what she had told me a couple of weeks before. So she asked me a very profound question, and it's, it's been a life lesson. She 
she say, son, you know, my mama wasn't one of the people that just let stuff ride. I guess that's where I got it from. I just don't let it go. She said, where are your friends at? <laughs> I mean, you, you need to ride to work. Where are your friends at? I just told you, me and your daddy, your only friends, but where are your friends at? The ones that you was telling me about your friends. So I found out that if you want to keep friends, you please them that help you. That's what Jesus did. He was interdependent. He said, he that has sent me is what? Is with me. And I do always those things that please him. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to them Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall what? Know the truth. Oh, my God. And the truth that you know will make you free. Huh? In other words, if you know the truth, generally alluded to this. I thought he was going to preach my message a while ago. He said, you can't believe what you hear. 95% of what you hear is not the truth. But once you know the truth, you got to relate to the truth because then you're free. True freedom. Come on, we're in a country that, 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 that we believe in, in freedom, right? This is tomorrow. Everybody's going to be barbecuing, celebrating the independence of a nation, the birth of a nation, I say. But I'm telling you the truth of it is, is that if you know the truth, then you're free. I come to tell you the truth today. So that you can truly be free. See, you know, you're not free when you believe a lie because you're entangled with the yoke of the bondage of that lie. Let me tell you something. Trying to live a lie is a hard thing to do. Hmm? Living a lie is a hard thing to do. Huh? If you know who you are, just be who you call to be. Don't try to be me. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't try to be like Mike. Come on, somebody. Hmm? Mike can't even live it up no more. Don't try to be like nobody but who you are called to be. Be you. Yeah. And when you be you, you're going to be true. Hmm? See, I don't have to imitate. I don't have to worry about, you know, whether you like it or not. Come on, somebody. I don't have to worry about if I got it down, I crossed all my eyes and dotted all my T's. Or should I cross the T's and die to die? It's me. And Jesus said, I come that you might know the truth, and the truth might make you free. But in order for you to understand the truth, the truth is in me. He said, I'm the truth. Come on, young folk. Uh, when you see something and you like it, say, that's the truth. Yeah. Huh? Come on, that, 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 that was a net. That last year's language. That's the truth. That's what we used to say. Man, that, that, that thing was the truth. That was dope. That was it. Hmm? Well, Jesus is the truth. And the truth in him makes you free. Hmm? When you place your trust and your faith and your life in him, see the life I live, I live in him. I'm not dependent on me. I'm dependent on him. Huh? I'm not dependent on my friends. Listen, I'm not trying to impress my friends no more. Hmm? I don't care if they like me or they don't like me. Huh? My mama already told me, both my best friends is gone. Hmm? Huh? Come on. My best friends, is, I got some old friends, but I'm just telling you that the truth in him makes you free. Because now you know you got a true friend that's what? That's going to be with you. Oh, come on now. Worst thing you do is start a fight and count on some friends to back you up. 